Welcome to Planetary Imaging Introduction. Technology has made it so that we can take beautiful pictures of the planets with very little effort. The technology that makes this possible is the webcam. You might remember back in 1994, as comet Shoemaker-Levy was crashing into Jupiter, that the pictures of Jupiter taken by large ground-based telescopes were just awful compared to those taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, amateurs everywhere are getting Hubble-like pictures of the planets using these high-speed webcams that have since come out. For those of you who would like to take your own pictures, I've made a dozen or so videos to help you get started. In this video, I'll give you an overview of what's involved. You start by using your webcam to make a movie of the planet. The movie is very boring because it's basically just the planet for a minute or two. The planet will move around the screen a little bit. The amount it moves depends on how good your mount is. Notice that this video is far from the Hubble-like image we will eventually get, and we don't see any color. This was made with a one-shot color webcam, and we're seeing the raw data. Each pixel has a red, green, or blue filter over it, but the camera only measures the light intensity as seen through the colored filters. When we are done, we'll have a fairly large AVI file, which could easily be a gigabyte or more. This is because we've collected 10 or 20,000 frames that are not compressed. We then run this giant AVI file through some stacking software, and it combines the best frames into a single stacked image. Notice the stacked image only looks a little bit better than the single frames of our movie. You can make your movie with 500 frames or 20,000 frames, and the stacked image will appear about the same. The difference becomes apparent though when we sharpen the stacked image. When you use a stacked image that came from many frames, you can sharpen it a lot more before artifacts start to appear, or before it just looks artificially over sharpened. One thing that surprised me was how few pixels are involved. You should expect Jupiter to be, in pixels, about the size of your telescope's diameter in millimeters. If you have an 8 inch scope, which is about 200 millimeters, then your Jupiter will be about 200 pixels in diameter. Still, we can now get pictures way sharper than a 100-inch telescope could back when the comet smashed into Jupiter just a few decades ago. Planetary imaging is different from deep sky imaging in several ways. One is that planets move on an hourly basis. You can notice a moon move in just a few minutes. A galaxy might not look very different after a million years. You can take pictures of planets from your driveway when there's a full moon right next to your target and you have streetlights all around so you don't have to pack up and drive far from the city. Planetary imaging is also cheaper. You won't need to spend as much on a mount and camera. I have created a planetary imaging playlist so you can find all the videos I've made on this topic in one place. You might want to check the video description of each video. You never know what you might find there. This is the end of this video. If you would like to learn more, then click on one of the four quadrants of the screen to watch another video. In the Equipment Needed video, I quickly cover cameras, computers, telescopes, Barlow lenses, and the mount. In the DSLR video, I talk about reasons why you might want to use a webcam, even if you already have a DSLR camera. I have another video about webcams where I talk about some of the webcams that are out there and my experiences with them. To see a listing of all my videos on planetary imaging, then click on the bottom right quadrant. Subscribe to my channel so you can find out about new videos when they're made. You have to click now because once this video truly ends, the four pictures will go away. If that happens, you can just find the links in the video description in the About section.